RBS Basic Research Academy welcomes to you in the video lecture number 16. In this uh, video, I'm going to discuss about the rules of thumb for the structural model evolution. Dear friends, in the last two videos, in the 15A uh, part one and the 15 part two, where I discuss about the uh, six steps to assess the results of the structural model evaluation. So several uh, rules of thumb I discussed in these two parts. So I thought uh, it would be better for us uh, to, to, to keep all these rule of thumb in a one video. That's why I have found this exhibit 6.8 rules for uh, rule, uh, rules of thumb for essential model evolution from this book. So it is very important to share all these ones with you in the single video. Uh, dear friends, my name is Dr. Rainbow Sumro and uh, I'm from Shabdi University. This is my uh, uh, certificate, which I, I earned after completing the online course from the Smart Peers Academy, Germany. Dear friends, so let's start to discuss some of the uh, important, uh, these rule of thumbs. First of all, I would like to, uh, uh, the Mr. Your attention to divert your attention to the rules of thumb. The rule of thumb, these are not a scientific rules like the uh, in the science, in the physical for science, in the natural science. These are the social science rules. Uh, they will somewhat from all these rules, but along with the proper justification, uh, along with the proper reasoning, logical reasoning behind that one. That's very important. So first of all, in the step number one of the structural model as procedure, we discuss about the uh, assess a structural model called for current issue. So currently we can check through the two values. One is a tolerance and NRBIA. If the value of the tolerance is less than 0 0.20, 0, it means surely there is a collinearity. And if this value is more than uh, point, more than five, that means that there is a there is also collinearity in your uh, in your constructs. So uh, one more thing that if you are become much more liberal, then you can also sometimes go on the 10. Because of any reason, if the uh, you can also set the 10 as a benchmark, if the value of any, uh, like the construct is more than the 10, that means that we have value, that means that quality uh, is there. But if you are, that means are so much strict, then the three is okay. But so I always prefer to have the five. So if the VI values of any constructs are less than five, that's okay. More than five, then it's the similar, then it's coordinate is there. If the VI value is more than five and coordinate is there, what to do? The three uh, tools are there, which we discussed in our last video, uh, in the video number 15, part one, the one the single construct, okay. Uh, then it's the merging predictor into the single construct. You can merge that. Uh, uh, predictors of the two uh, of the uh, uh, two cons into the single construct. You can create the high order uh, constructs, okay, and you can also eliminate the whole construct. So three three tools are there to treat the collinearity. And uh, another thing we discuss about that to assess the significance, the relevance of the structural relationship. So now we do uh, we did this with the help of the bootstrapping. So bootstrapping for this one, you are required to have a five thousand samples. Uh, sub samples and uh, the critical values I discussed over there is uh, like the 10% uh, 1 1.65, 10% 1 1.96 uh, for the 5% and 2.57 for that 1%. This is the story when you have the tool tail, uh, the MISA you are hypothesis. When you are single uh, test, have, uh, single tail hypothesis, then the story is somewhat different. That is about the uh, p value 0.01. Significance 10 percent, 0.05 significance for 5 percent, and 0 0.01 for the uh, 99 percent. So uh, now, if you are dealing with the experimental research, then the, I think the 99 percent confidence interval is better than the all others one. And if you are working on the expert research, that means that the 90 percent is good than the 95 or uh, 99 percent. But you will in the rest of the study, usually we uh, follow the 5 percent significance level okay and then bootstrapping uh, okay i want to share uh, one interesting thing with that so now we have the uh, 5000 
same critical value but because some because of some time uh, to set the time sometimes we use the 500 so now uh, to set the time we use the 500 then you will find the a shocking difference between the results the result which you are get, getting when your sub sample is a 5000 and when your sub sample is a 500 you will get the shocking results that means let's see how what if the differences are there i i want to show you one of my own experience with you now this is a word file uh, in this you're looking here now this is a uh, like the uh, p value with a 500 in this one see the most of our uh, my hypothesis, like all these are the hypothesis, and most of them they are rejected or unsupported because of the our p value is 500 as a statement. Okay, and then again, but uh, when we go on the other side, like when we have the sample size of the 5000, okay, now here. TP will be the 5,000 samples. And now see here that the most of the most of my hypothesis have been supported right now. Now see the P values. So now that there's a drastic change in this one. So that's why please uh, I request you that the prefer the 5,000 instead of the 500. Because if you are preferring the 5,000, if you are working on the 5,000, you have the more stable results uh, in this way. Okay, but some uh, uh, researchers have suggested the 2000 is also okay. Now, if the time is not an issue for you, then I think the 5000 sub samples are better than all others. But this is my personal experience. Uh, now, another is the bootstrap confidence interval provides additional information on stability of the path coefficients. Now, bootstrap, now what is it? It provides the additional stability that the, either your uh, path coefficient are stable or not. So when the model are not complex, like the one dependent, dependent variable and few more, two or three, they are the uh, independent variable, like the total four or five constraints are there and sample size is also small. Small means less than 100 or less than 500, uh, 50, then you can also use a double bootstrapping, but subject to availability of the enough time to you. Okay, and uh, then PLS same, M say they're maximizing R square. So there's the values of the R square 0 0.75, 0 0.5, 0 0.25 for the release constructs, moderate, uh, substantial moderate and weak. So now what is the R square you are getting from your uh, after running the PLS algorithm, then you can uh, like that compare with all these values. And another is the adjusted R square. You're looking here one image where the R square and adjusted R both are there. So now, if you want to compare the models, then you can refer the adjusted R square. And effect size was another tool which we measured now the, of the exogenous constraint contribution to the endogenous constraint uh, variable R square. If the value of F square is 0 0.02, 0 0.15, and 0.35, the alternately small, medium, and large uh, effect is there. You can compare your F square with these ones, and you can get to know where you are standing. And the predictive relevance is another one. Use blindfolding to obtain the cross validate redundancy, measure for each endogenous construct. Okay, make sure number of the observation used in the model uh, estimation divided by the omission D. So now, uh, in the last video, uh, like the video number 15, part two, we discussed, we understood about the distance D. So normally we keep seven as our uh, uh, the visa, our distant D, because the seventh is a, our data point which will be deleted by the uh, uh, software in the blind folding procedure. Okay, and uh, the range is then from five to ten. Now, any one from five to ten you can choose, but that should not be the integer. That's important. That should not be the integer. So seven is not integer. So that's why most of people are. Uh, it is also uh, suggested to choose the seven as your uh, D. And then effect size is another one. Uh, like the effect size of the Q square, like the effect F square of the uh, like the uh, R square, we checked that one. Exogenous construct contribution, endogenous latent variable, okay, and a Q square. Its value is also same 0 0.02, 0 0.15, 0 0.35, like the small, medium, and large. You can compare with this one. And uh, lastly. But if you want to test the theory, then the SMR, SRMR, RMS, 
and these are available there. And the, the conservative approach is there, less than 0 0.08, okay, or 1.12 indicate a good fit. So now, uh, and then if you want to test your theory in this one, so these are uh, the these were the, some of the uh, like the uh, rules of thumb when you are going to check out the uh, a structural model. Okay, uh, one more thing which I want to share with you, a uh, very important thing which I want to share with you. Let's go on the our smart PLS software. So again, we are on our smart PLS software. So I'm going to open my demo file. By the way, I have, uh, I have provided the link from where this demo uh, data you can download for the practice purpose. Okay. Okay, and then uh, here you're looking, two things are PLS algorithm. This we can use technique when we have all the our formative indicators. Okay, and uh, we use a consistent PLS algorithm when all we have the reflective are, we have the mixture of the reflective and the formative. Okay, so in this case, we have to use the consistent PLS algorithm. So if you wrongly, you will use, then that they will find that some significant change in your results, how I'm looking for it to you. Okay, now first off, I have to decide the either my, all the, these certain variable are reflective or formative. All my, uh, these are reflective. Okay, now I know these are reflective, but I'm going to apply the PLS algorithm, which is for the purely for the formative. Everything is okay, just start calculations. Now the results are before you. Okay, uh, now these are the paths. Okay, and uh, I have to go on the model. Now in the model. Now first of all, you can look here, your R squared, that's 0.298. And uh, the path values of all independent variable. Now you can keep all these in your mind, okay? Now I'm going to apply another procedure. Now this procedure is a uh, right one because all my uh, indicators, they are reflective. That's why I'm applying consistent PLS algorithm. So now you will then check the Mr. what's the, how the, uh, up to whatever you, your, uh, your results have been changed. Start calculations. Okay, now the results are here. So now, uh, these are results in this one, R squared is 22, 23% R squared. When we applied the correct method, now see our R squared has uh, significantly, uh, up, uh, the, miss, uh, the miss has been increased, that is 0.44, uh, 0.44, earlier it was 23%. Now. Now see the difference between the when you are using when you are choosing the wrong the wrong method for particular data, see the result. When, when you are choosing the right method for your data, see the result. Uh, such a quite different results are there. Uh, in this one, one more thing is there. The, the TGP earlier its value uh, was uh, 0 0.403. Now it is point, uh, 0.489. Such a good change, heavy change is there, and media. Earlier it was 0 0.007, now it is a negative 0 0.001. Again, the change in the result. Okay, and then uh, price 0 0.029. Earlier it was a negative 0 0.03, now it has a positive relation. Earlier it was negative relations. So that's very uh, important to check out. ITP earlier point minus 0 0.035, now it is a positive 0 0.0. Uh, again, it is a negative. Yes, it is a negative, but it has a 0 0.041. So now some of the uh, some of the changes are there. Like I use about drastic changes are there. So that's why I suggest you please use a correct method algorithm when you have all the uh, indicators are variable are formative, but when you have the all indicators are, are your uh, construct are the reflective or mixture of the reflective format, then please use construction. Uh, PLS algorithm. Now, this uh, I have known by from your my experience. So I, that's why I thought why I should not share this experience with you. So, uh, dear friends, after having this wonderful discussion, I hope that Mr. You have enjoyed this lecture, and this lecture has also increased in your knowledge, increased your knowledge. So, at the end of this uh, video number sixteen. 
I'm thankful to you that you have watched this video till end. So please take it off yourself and please take off this channel. Thank you very much.